Well, last Saturday night at Five, Five Flag Speedway, the uh, Saturday night superstar racing experience kicked off season number two. And for a while, we thought the Bubba Pollard was going to join Doug Kobe as an outside hometown cat to beat yep. all of the veterans. Joining me now is next up in that hometown ringer category when the SRX series goes to South Boston Speedway this weekend to compete on Saturday night. He's Peyton Sellers. He's a regular visitor here in the wind tunnel. Peyton, I got to tell you, you look good in that black SRX suit. Absolutely, Jack. It's It's been a neat experience so far. You know, last year winning the Advanced Auto Parts Weekly Series National Championship, it kind of put me on a platform to be able to be the guy when it comes to South Boston. So uh, really neat opportunity. <clears throat> I'm actually, you know, I was not really putting a lot of thought into it. I was trying to take it easy. I was trying to, uh, you know, not worry about it too much. But the way Bubble ran Saturday night, I'm like, you know, the pressure's on me. I got to carry the banner here. For yeah. all <laughs> so, well, what? Did, let me ask you this, Peyton. What did you learn? watching at five flags which is a different racetrack shall we say than sobo is so what did you learn that you think you can put into effect come saturday night you know the intensity level was pretty high the whole race these guys were racing hard you know they were not you know they were not tiptoeing around people they, they laid the bumper to them and moved, moved by them pretty quick so uh just kind of seeing the way they drove the cars and they kind of you know they manhandled those cars a lot because i don't think they turned that great i think they're kind of a bull in the china shop kind of car you know they got a lot of horsepower they don't turn great and they're uh they're hot you know the common thing with all these drivers saturday night was how hot these cars were so uh you know i think that'll be fine i'm okay with the heat you know we're in here in virginia so i'm used to the heat and humidity no doubt about it so um the thing for me i race a hoosier tire primarily you know most of the track we go through. sure jumping on this goodyear tire like the k and n series runs i don't know how hard you can abuse it. i don't know if you have to you know let it let it cool off some before you go after it again, or, you know, if it can, you know, if you can just kind of beat on it all night. So that's going to be the challenge for me. I think adapting to the horsepower weight ratio will be fine and and learning to race with these guys. There's no spotters. So the only thing you have in your ear is when the caution's out or how to line up. Um, a lot of the guys up North do that, you know, a lot without spotters. So dirt racing and stuff. So it's going to be a new challenge for me, but you know, I know the track very well. I just have to adapt to the car. Well, let's talk about it, though, for a second. The cars themselves, purpose-built race cars, a little bit heavier than maybe what you are used to. But also the format is different, Peyton. And I don't know about you, but as I watched that, I started to look and I thought, hmm, Bubba, you made your move too soon. You got a TV timeout coming, a caution, or, or as Alan Vestwick calls them, a fun flag. And it's still their timed events. Even that 75 lapper, you get down because they, you count the caution laps. So it, it's almost like you need to save your stuff until the last TV timeout. Exactly. You know, and it looked like when they all fired off, they had a little bit different aggression level this second time. So they were racing think? Yeah. They side by side, went three wide for a while. So um, you're right. I think Bubba went a little quick, but he did get a tire and had to drive back to the front. So by the time he got back to the front, Helio was gone and checked out. So. Have you had a chance to drive them or are they limiting it till the, when you get there race week, race you day? Get, get about a 10 minute practice and that's it. So it's going to be uh, all fresh for me. I did go to the shop. I had a media day with them. I got, got to jump into cars and try to get the seats fitted up and that sort of thing. And, you know, that'll help a little bit, but at the end of the day, it's going to be kind of a free for all there jumping in, trying to figure it out in a short time. Well, now, wait a minute. Then finally, after all your years, excelling at the late model level you understand what some of the proteges that you bring in as newbies into your race team trying to marshal them along maybe you can get a little deeper appreciation for the uphill battle they face week in and week out exactly exactly i've been at their level too I, i've been around a long time and jumping to different series and different cars and different tracks it's definitely you have to adapt very quickly Peyton, how important is it for you to uh, follow, not just in Bubba's footsteps, but let's face it, uh, I think everybody was thrown for a loop when Doug Kobe, who still to this day is the only short tracker to win against these superstars back at Stafford Speedway. So how important is it for you to etch your name next to uh, Doug Kobe's as the, the, the ringer taking the title? So something I take a lot of pride in is being a short track racer. I'm not. Right. You know, the fans have a hard time relating to Helio or Tony Kanaan or some of these guys because they're world-renowned race car drivers. 
best of the best. They don't relate with good old country boys or, or, or you know, guys that work on their cars all night, wherever they're at, going to advance auto parts, buying their parts and working on their cars. That's stuff I do. So I feel like the fans relate to us very well. So I've got to go out there and represent every guy that races at every dirt track or every Stafford or South Boston or any track in between. I feel like I'm, I'm representing that whole nation of, of drivers and racers. You up to the task? I sure hope so. I sure hope so. Press his own. <laughs> hey, the uh, media day you mentioned that gave you an opportunity, I would think, too, to maybe uh, interact with some of these guys mm-hmm. from mm-hmm. Tony Kanan to Elio to, to Wild Bill Elliott, you know, all of them. Were there, were there any funny moments that took place? Because those commercial shoots, those TV shoots really can get long. And there's, there, there's a lot that gets, ends up on the cutting room floor. Yeah, it was, it was a full day of, of talking to people, you know, you know, different commentators and, you know, different angles and taking, taking the picture of 28 different ways and that sort of thing. So all the TV stuff will kind of bring it all together this weekend when people see it. But, you know, me and Bubba was sitting there looking at one of the cars they had on display and we were like, you know, you know, how's this thing going to drive in relation to our late models? He drives a super, I drive a late model stock. So how are they going to relate? Tony Stewart walked up and says, guys, get away from the car, quit thinking about it. Just take it for what it is. Enjoy it, adapt to the car and go fast. He said, the more you sweat about it and think about it and focus on it, the worst you're going to do. Listen, when you were in your EV chair, when you were in your easy chair, like I was Saturday night and you heard that, uh, all, all of a sudden, Connor Daly is going to talk to Tony Stewart at speed. Did yeah. It go, did it go through your head? Uh-oh. You know what? Maybe they're going to do that to me at South Boston. It's no telling what I'll be able to say. You know? <laughs> <laughs> like, hold on a minute. Let me get through this corner. So. I got it. I, I think I may have the secret weapon for you. All right. I, I think after the first practice, you ought to spring for at least a dozen fried bologna sandwiches. And then, you know, hand them out because most of those cats have never consumed a fried bologna sandwich. Correct. And that is the, you know, hey, that, that's the Martinsville hot dog for South Boston. That's a staple at South Boston. You got to yeah. have it. So, you know, I actually, South Boston has been doing a lot of painting, freshening up, lawn care, different things. They, the place is really looking good right now. They've got two of their bigger events coming in over the next two weeks. They've got a, a $10,000 win race, 200 lap race, 4th of July weekend that's the first leg of the Virginia triple crown that we do here. So the next two weekends for South Boston are big and having this SRX race come to South side Virginia should bring a lot of people in. They're, they're going to have a, a big crowd Saturday night. Um, they've got a lot of good things going, you know, with the drivers of this caliber coming in, it's going to be a neat opportunity. So, and I hope it brings a lot of publicity to South Boston and uh, you know, hopefully I can hold my own with them. No doubt about it. But at the end of the day, we're going to have a lot of fun. That's what it's all about. And listen, that is indeed what it's all about. But uh, go ahead. You can pinch yourself now and again to remind yourself that now you are part of the superstar category after all these years. But, hell, everybody that sits in the stands at South Boston already consider you, Peyton, uh, a, a, a true superstar, a superstar they can sit down next to and talk to. So they interviewed me the other week at South Boston. I told them, I said, guys, look, whether you're a Peyton Sellers fan or not, whether you want to see Peyton beat Tony or see Tony, you know, send Peyton out of the grandstands, you know, come watch it. It'll be a show either way, whether you're a fan of me or not come out. Cause we're going to put on a show and that's what it's all about. You know, it's, it's uh, you know, I don't want to call it an exhibition race, but it's a lot of fun. Cause these, these are very high horsepower cars with not much tire on them. They're going to, you know, you're going to have to adapt pretty quick and learn how to drive this thing. Watch out for Paul Tracy. And no doubt, no doubt. <laughs> hey, 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 Peyton, we're very excited for you. We will be watching, as I'm sure almost everybody listening to this podcast will. And uh, I think more than you believe, we'll be pulling for you, even out of the south side of Virginia, uh, because uh-huh. they're short track racers at heart, and they always love a good David and Goliath story. That's right. That's right. So, no, we're going to try to put on a show for you. Uh, it's been a lot of press involved in it. It's been a lot of exposure that I didn't know was coming. So that's going to be a pretty neat deal. And to be live on CBS primetime Saturday night, it's a big deal. We wish you the very best, my friend. Go get that checkered flag. Thanks, Jack. If we win, I expect to be back on next week. That is a deal. You All got right. it. Good deal. Thank you, sir.